Okay, and I will uh, try to switch to the screen where we stop. So uh, I hope uh, you you see it. Just tell yes. Uh, can you see the screen with Protege? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, so uh, I, I just uh, remind you briefly. So uh, when you open Protege, you can always, of course, uh, open existing files from your computer, or you can open files which are uh, which is uh, published somewhere in the web. So through URL. Uh, in our case, now we are doing everything in local compute, uh, computer, and then after the course, uh, I will publish it somewhere in my space. Not somewhere, but exactly here. You see, this is URI of this anthology, so uh, this will be clickable link. Right now, it's just name. It's not clickable link, but when I will put it exactly to this my uh, personal storage space, it will be clickable. So the same is about when you will design your own anthology. So it's expected that you uh, put here your own uh, space, like it will be something like users, you fee, your name, and the name of your anthology. I was suggested that you use uh, special name it's everything in the instructions uh, and when you have access to that your space you can just publish this anthology when it is ready and then uh, it will be easy task just to send me link to this anthology and uh, write few words uh, or few lines of uh, uh, how to say your conclusion you may check in the uh, uh, how to say instructions, so what I am expecting you uh, to write there. So, for example, how these kind of files that you have created can be used, what kind of applications can be done on top of it if, like, uh, everyone creates this kind of uh, personal um, descriptions. So that was related to this header. And also, if you are going to use uh, references to uh, other storages of metadata, like DBpedia, so here we have a possibility to add ontology prefix. So I add here prefix from DBpedia so that I can, uh, let's say, faster uh, add here objects which actually store it in Captain DBP, and I can create links between objects which are defined in this ontology with the objects which are defined in DBP. And uh, the rest prefixes are just uh, predefined here. What else? Uh, the basic uh, things uh, that we started our uh, previous class was. Uh, creating uh, several classes of objects that we will be dealing with. And these classes, uh, I extended them a bit, now includes that kind of first layer of our taxonomy. So city as a class, country as a class, educational degree, educational institution, person, and profession. So you can add as many as necessary at, the, at that le level just by making subclass of this OVL thing stuff. Or if you choose any of this class, like person, you can go deeper to it. So you can create subclass of person. We have already created several subclasses of persons. I also add a few new ones, but you can check what is there. So we uh, said that person can be man and can be woman. And uh, you see that man is disjoint with woman. So nobody can be both man and woman. And then we also create uh, this kind of uh, three classes related to age, like old person, mid-aged person, and young person. And we also put there that they're disjoint with each other. So it's not fuzzy classes. 
it just this kind of crisp classes so they have clear boundary between themselves then we also create another way to divide persons to non-vegetarian and vegetarian and we said that they are just disjoint with each other so that was uh, preparation of our uh, taxonomy and uh, of course we can go deeper here and uh, one way uh, i have created one exotic class here and uh, i will just now repeat doing similar type of class so that you understand how how we can create new classes as a combination of previously defined so i just first created just as a high level class like here and name it as old on vegetarian so i can create such class old non vegetarian men so now it appears here as a subclass of thing but uh, i want to give some definition of it so i would uh, what i want to say that actually this class is intersection of three classes so it's intersection of men intersection of old and intersection of non vegetarian so this is uh, doable here so you see that when your class is uh, active here you see description of non vegetarian men and i want to say that this class is equivalent to such intersection so i click here add and select for example class expression editor and just type it like uh, it's old intersection means end non vegetarian and men you see because nothing is uh, marked with red so it means that it's correct uh, statement these keywords you see here is end in this case so it's conjunction or intersection of classes and uh, here this uh, correct names of our classes so i click ok and you see this is uh, become here as equivalent and what does it mean actually it means that in our uh, hierarchy you can see that this uh, old vegetarian man automatically become subclass of class old which is naturally it's also subclass of class non vegetarian and must be also subclass of man i create uh, also such kind of classes myself before like old teacher so how i define this old teacher class just let's check this uh, definition here so if you remember we have such kind of class as profession and within this class just to check we have uh, three different professions at least we have two but i add one librarian so we have uh, three professions formula 1 driver librarian and teacher so in this case uh, teacher is not name of class it's just instance within class profession but uh, we know that there is certain property let's check where we have this object properties has profession you see we have such property has profession which is applied to all person and the value will is taken from profession so this is uh, something we already have and now i am just showing how i defined uh, again this class uh, which is old teacher i just type that it's old 
and the property has profession value teacher it's a keyword here so it means that it's like a intersection of two classes of being old and the class of all persons of uh, like class of everything which has profession teacher and this intersection will be old teacher in this case if i have special class teachers or teacher class then i would just put old and teacher but in this case i'm using particular property to do this so that's uh, just one more or less complex thing but therefore i just put it so that will be here as a sample uh, how you can do a uh, similar type of stuff when you make combination of classes and property values and also i have uh, some class like young vegetarian woman of course, if I have old vegetarian men, the young vegetarian woman will be just intersection of three classes, vegetarian and woman and young. So similar as I uh, put uh, old non-vegetarian men. So please uh, tell me whether you're following it. So is it clear everything right now? Uh in this case when you are creating a new class at the top thing right so after adding it to the equivalent portion that is getting removed from the uh, thing right yeah, yeah. it just uh, when i add it here uh, yeah. when i uh, put uh, that kind of formula for this class then it put it to the right places of the hierarchy automatically it's not anymore remaining in this level because it's a combination of previous classes and that's like embedded inference uh, which is there uh, just compute the right place for this class so it can appear in several places in this particular case because it's subclass of men subclass of uh, non-vegetarian subclass of uh, woman uh, or okay so is, uh... Uh, in case of the other classes, you did the same thing, right? You first added the young vegetarian women class in the top part, and after that, you just uh, added the intersection, and they are added in. Yeah. Here I did it. And uh, other classes, we just don't touch, like city, we don't put any kind of description or country, we don't put description, educational degree. But if you create complex class uh, as a com logical combination of other, then you type this formula so that's right, okay. uh, Thank you. and uh, what else that if uh, okay i will save just in case uh, then i also add uh, some new individual let's check the class person It's uh, name Maria. I just uh, explicitly say that Maria, what I know about her, that she's a vegetarian. And also what I know about her, that uh, her gender is female. By the way, I am not sure that I have uh, shown uh, that we had this kind of property last time. I just remind you that it's data property. We had that uh, the person may have birth year and also gender. And gender we defined also as functional property. You can have only one gender and the range of it is string. So every person may have gender and uh, the range is string, just type either male or female. Yeah, probably we had this uh, already there. And uh, what also uh, I just want to say that in the very beginning, this uh, lady, it's not known that she belongs to class woman. You see, we, uh, we, we never, we are not yet explicitly say 
that uh, everyone in class woman must be female. System doesn't know it. And we have several ways of doing it. And uh, one way what I did, I did it with rules. So you can just probably read these two few first rules and understand the logic behind it. I just say that uh, like if someone has gender male, you see when it is string, it must be in this kind of brackets. So if someone uh, has gender male, then this someone is man, belong to class man. And if uh, someone has gender female, someone must belong to class woman. So when it is part of rules, then only after reasoner runs, it will show that, I hope it will show that Maria will belong to class woman. And now uh, it was, I, I just did it for purpose uh, when I come back to classes. So consider that we have this class, young vegetarian woman. So in our case, uh, what we know about that Maria, we know only her year of birth. It's one thing what we know. Uh, another thing what we know that uh, she has gender female. We, not, we, we don't know yet infer that she's woman. And about vegetarian, it was explicitly her property. Like we can check vegetarian. So Maria is vegetarian. It is known just by uh, explicitly. Just we know that she's vegetarian. But what I, I want that my reasoner will be capable to put her to this class, young vegetarian woman. To be able to do this, of course, uh, we need to define also uh, that kind of rules how to specify or dis distinguish between old, young, and mid-aged. We start doing these uh, rules last time. I just remind you some of them, and uh, I just complete them all. So every rule is defining certain class. Like I can define classes, as you see, not only with that uh, class descriptions, but also with rules. In this particular case, I define young person so someone is young if he has birth some birth year and this birth year is greater or equal than 1980. So everyone who born after 1980 is a young person according to this rule. Check it. Is it clear? Can you do the same rule? So... Uh... Uh, in case of the variables here, x is the person and y is the uh, value of his age, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just a, a relation between these two entities. So uh, this is like a subject and this is a object of relation. So it means that uh, uh, this one has burst year, which is this one. So this is year in this case. And now this uh, second predicate we are checking here, now it's related to this birth year. We are comparing this Y with 1980. This is greater than or equal. It's a, a keyword in uh, semantic web rule language. And uh, this we will have more information next, our last lecture. I just uh, use this keyword here. But because it's like self-descriptive, it's easy to read. So it means that this keyword uh, is uh, comparing these two things. So if uh, someone has this uh, year birthday and this birthday is greater than 1980, then the person will be, let's say, will, will be put to class young. So what is here written? So here written a similar rule to define class old. In this case, we are using another uh, keyword from SVRL, a semantic web rule language, less than. So everyone who 
born before 1960 is old person, according to this rule. Is it clear? Yes. yes. But can you okay. have like the dynamic number on there, like current year minus 60, for example, on this uh, comparison? Yeah, theoretically, yes. But then uh, all the time uh, you need to, uh, when you open anthology, to specify explicitly what is current year right now. And of course, then it will uh, work. But in, in this case, it's easier because this is the property which is constantly belong to the human. It's constant. So therefore, you can uh, always define uh, like that. But of course, uh, if... Uh, uh, after hundreds of years, then you must reconsider these rules because then everyone will be old according to that property. Of course, it's uh, better to use uh, current year somehow here, but in this case, you must then specify this variable current year. For simplicity, I am not doing this right now, but uh, in my slides, there is reference to uh, one ontology which I make to manage time for temporal reasoning. And then you can see uh, how it deals with current date, not only year, but just current date and how it is used with all other reasoners. But in this particular case, it's just like today these rules are valid. So that uh, uh, the third rule you see that to say that you are mid-age, definitely we need uh, like uh, that kind of more complex inequality. So I say that everyone who, let's say, born between 60 and 80, and you must uh, check all the time to use uh, just greater than or greater than or equal, because uh, these three things must not be, intervals must not be intersected, even in the points of particular year. So you can check that this, uh, they are not intersected. Otherwise, if somebody born uh, just in 1980, let's say, or 1960, exactly, it will be problem if we don't use this uh, concrete, like either uh, strict inequality or more soft one. So we define these intervals, and it means that if uh, now uh, you register any person and you add uh, his uh, year of birth, because we have such property, year of birth, and when you enter it, then when you uh, start running reasoner, reasoner uh, must compute or infer that this person belong to one of these three classes. So now let's uh, check, uh, because our concern is this, uh, that Maria, who is, uh, in our case, uh, because she born in summer, let's check her again. So Maria, she born, uh, born in 1999. So according to these rules, when we, are, when we run inf uh, inference or reasoner, it must uh, consider her as a young person. Then another rule, which checks female, must uh, infer that she is woman. So it's quite complicated. Like there are two already inferences needed. And uh, third, uh, check that she is vegetarian, but it's explicitly known. So this is explicitly true. And these two things must be uh, checked by reasoner. And if so, then she must appear in this particular class. So let's try to run reasoner. So let's check what we have here. Classes, young vegetarian woman. So we see that instance of this class appear as a Maria. So Maria is inferred as an instance of class young vegetarian woman. So uh, you see it's quite a lot of different uh, implicit things can be inferred using uh, just smart way of using rules. 
But of course, uh, in the same way, if he, I didn't do here, but I can define class woman, for example, explicitly, like put here, I am not doing it right now, just uh, believe me, click into equivalent to, and I may say that uh, woman is an intersection of class person and everything which has uh, which property uh, gender has value woman like okay I will put it so it's equivalent to class expression it's uh, person and has gender value female. So this is another way. So instead of writing rule, I just define uh, like uh, the class by this way. And in this case, uh, the reasoner must also consider her as a woman. Uh, I think that we can check it just in case. So, okay. And to be sure that it works, let's delete the rule. I first just save it. So now we don't have rule, but uh, we hope that a reasoner will use that class definition. So reasoner. Okay, now we run reasoner again and let's check class. Yeah. You see that it's again uh, discovers that Maria is there in this class, young vegetarian woman. So it means that uh, uh, this uh, woman property, no, so being woman is taken from the class definition that woman is uh, everyone who has, every person who has gender female. So this is just uh, two different ways of using this kind of thing. Any questions at this moment? Because it's important, like uh, uh, the rest is just, uh, okay, you can uh, write more complex things, but with these kind of basic tricks, there is nothing else there. This is a major uh, tricks we have already considered here. Any questions or what you are not sure how how it works? So uh, in this case, when um, you are adding the different classes like old non vegetarian, old vegetarian, stuff like that. So how this will help in case of like uh, query after we complete the ontology, like. Uh, when someone uh, tries to use this ontology and try to, um, you know, find out the old vegetarian uh, women, so that list will come up like this, or like how how this will help afterwards. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you think about, uh, as you notice, uh, everything which is like with yellow color here, are the things which uh, reasoner infers, but it's not making it explicit. It just infers and mark is a yellow. So if we use uh, just uh, external query engine like Spark QL engine to query this ontology, and we just uh, ask, show us uh, all young vegetarian women. So this Spark QL query will take only explicit information and report that there is no nobody in this class because it's not there explicit. So therefore, if you just uh, create ontology, create, put a lot of content there, put your own rules, 
then you run inference and you infer new things. There is trick also in this uh, tool, uh, which makes, you can make this explicit and save. It's here when you have file, and you see here, export inferred axioms as ontology. I will not click it right now because I don't want to create mess right now in our project. But when you check this, it will uh, suggest you to uh, use uh, another name for this ontology, which will include also inferred stuff. Then, of course, in this case, if someone will query that new ontology with everything there. Then, of course, it will uh, also notice things which were not from the very beginning explicit, but reasoner makes them explicit, and you save it, the result of inference as explicit ontology. So that's uh, how, it, how it is designed. Okay. There are many reasons to do it like that. So, any other questions? Then, uh, just uh, okay, I will stop reasoning. It's always good when you uh, edit in anthology, you stop reasoning, then. Uh, you save after editing, and then you may start reasoner to check, and so on. So uh, there are uh, classes from the domain. Of course, you can create any abstract classes if you want. So, for example, you can create separate class for Wikipedia pages. Just you can put the concrete Wikipedia pages. I believe that we, in our active ontology uh, here, we may have for wiki... If we have no, yes, we have a prefix for wiki. That's what we created. So in this case, you can uh, just create new instances with this prefix wiki. So if, uh, of course, you may check first uh, from the Wikipedia whether such page exists, and uh, you can do it. So I believe that at least for some of our objects, like those uh, we have cities, all these cities definitely have Wikipedia page because they have DBpedia page. And we can create uh, this thing. So for that, I will just create here subclass and name it Wikipedia page. And I can create uh, various stuff there. For example, wiki. And uh, you may notice that uh, it's actually uh, always reaction of protege to this uh, kind of uh, DBpedia or Wikipedia. It just uh, don't show this prefix and uh, use Berlin as such. We have uh, also this problem yesterday. And uh, in this case, you may note that we have two different Berlins. Berlin is Wikipedia page and somewhere uh, city. Berlin is city. So it will. it's good uh, that you don't confuse it because it's two different things. Because the one page is in DBpedia, it's real identifier of city. And uh, another one is page of city. So therefore, there is uh, also a possibility. Here you have annotations. And uh, there is possible that you create that kind of so-named uh, label. I will do it once. And because you have record, you can also uh, use the same. And just to label it is as... 
So now when you put this label, it always will use this name here, Vicky Berlin, which is more suitable for you because you mentally understand that, okay, now we have right prefix here, which is corresponding to our, because still it's reference to this Wikipedia page of Berlin. And because I have created this page, I can, of course, immediately create property which connects uh, real cities with their Wikipedia page. So I can create uh, object property and create such property like has Wikipedia page. and put here who may have Wikipedia page, like domain. So I believe that city may have Wikipedia page. And what else? Country may have Wikipedia page. And person may have Wikipedia page and educational institution may have Wikipedia page and range is Wikipedia page. Is it correct? I believe so. I'm not sure. Just a moment. And if so, I can create also other way around property is wiki media page of domain is Wikipedia page. And it can be Wikipedia page. Again, now I put everything here. City, country, educational institution, person. And it's inverse of has Wikipedia page. So I created a special property and now it is uh, possible that uh, let's that right now I have just one Wikipedia page here. It's uh, Wikipedia page of Berlin and uh, let's try to uh, edit if I can um, find that, okay, I will try to take this one. So I have Wiki Berlin and assert here that object property that Wiki Berlin is the page of. Berlin. So let's check if it is uh, appeared correctly now. So where is our real Berlin? It's in the city. It's Berlin. And here is it's not here. So to get this uh, information about Berlin, I must run inference. Inconsistent, oh, let's check why it is inconsistent. By the way, notice it's uh, very good from time to time to use reasoner because if you make any mistake with your ontology, it will discover it immediately. There is an individual Wikipedia or page Berlin is forced to belong to class, country, and its complement. 
So I, I believe it's because of that, uh, how to say, some kind of strange synonymy that uh, uh, Protege is doing with Berlin as a Wikipedia page and Berlin as a DBpedia page. It's strange one. Okay, I will just try to stop prisoner and change a little bit this stuff. Just make it simpler and check if it works then. Okay, what about now annotation? Okay, data properties, object properties, our classes. I have city. Let's I take this one. Berlin and Wiki. So looks uh, okay for me. I don't understand what is the reason, but let's try again reasoner. Okay, now it works. So now it works. Now this uh, city Berlin, which is uh, just the name of that uh, particular object, Berlin. And it's referred that uh, it has Wikipedia page Berlin. Actually, it's also infers that it's capital of Germany, that is city of Germany. And it has uh, is location for uh, Humboldt University of Berlin. Why it's do it? Let's check why. Because when I uh, created that anthology, Uh, I add several of, uh, new pro uh, properties when I was uh, yesterday night. I uh, add property has capital, which is applied to, let's say, every country may have capital, which is taken from class city. And of course, is capital of also. And then uh, when I defined a uh, few of those cities, I just explicitly say who is who there. So let's stop prisoner. And where is our country? Let's check country. So when I define, for example, country uh, with instance Ukraine, I put uh, here explicitly that it has capital and reference to Kyiv. It has uh, like also, uh, it, Kyiv is not only capital, but also city in uh, Ukraine. And also I add here explicitly Kharkiv as a uh, city in Ukraine. Then let's check whether we have here Finland. Also uh, enter here that it has city Helsinki and capital Helsinki and has city Uvascular. What else was there? Germany I also add here. It's just one city, which is just city and capital of uh, Germany. And this opposite property was infrared, as you have seen when, when I defined Berlin, it's just discovered that it's uh, capital of Germany. From this property, this inverse property is also inferred. That was there. What else we have? 
seen. Uh, let's check how I defined uh, this university. Where is University of Uvascular? I just uh, create a special uh, object property has location to uh, use it. Like when I'm talking about particular organization, it may have location and city. So I create object property so that I can uh, describe University of Uvascular that it has location Uvascular if I want. And of course, on top of it, I can uh, write a lot of different uh, rules and new classes. I can create class like Finnish University and define it like uh, it's such universities which has city that belong to Finland. So if the university within city which belongs to Finland, then this university is Finnish University. So this is also possible here. So this just, uh, uh, and I also add uh, several uh, educational degrees, like a bachelor degree, a master of science degree and PhD degree, just that you know that this, uh, where is our degrees, educational degrees, bachelor, master of science and PhD. Then we have uh, three educational institutions. And then I connect our people to different educational institutions so that uh, that I will be uh, in University of Uvascula, Michael Schumacher in Humboldt University of Berlin, and Maria also in University of Uvascula, I guess. So something like that. So it's uh, just up to you how you connect all things together. I just uh, saying you before you start to think about new property, just check if you have a particular property defined already and just check whether it's object property or data type property. In our case, we just have a couple of data properties and you see so many object properties. But as you notice, actually, there are like pairs. Like is Wikipedia page, has Wikipedia page. It's a couple because it's uh, connecting uh, the same couple of objects through different directions. The same about uh, is capital of and has capital. Or is city of, has city. And so on. And this has city is applied to country so that you can uh, just check which city belong to which country using this property. Okay. Again, uh, anything what is not clear from what I'm talking, I can just uh, repeat or put more attention to it. Are you following? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, Wikipedia page, of course, now we can, uh, if you want, uh, you can do it yourself or I will do it later. Uh, night today, it just adding new instances to here, because everything uh, from that city and country, if they are from DBpedia, they have the same name in Wikipedia. So it's easy to add here, uh, just by using particular prefix wiki and not forget to put annotation there so that it will be, this prefix will be visible for you. Let us me make it for another city. It is one of the cities which is defined as a city and now I am defining uh, its Wikipedia page. Okay. And as you see, it, uh, it appears here without prefix. And to make this prefix visible, I am using again this 
label. So now it is there. And also I can uh, connect this Wikipedia page with actual city. So I just make object property assertion that this is, is Wikipedia page of Okay, then our city Kharkiv here. So whether it will discover, let's check reasoner. Yeah, so it discovers that it uh, Kharkiv as a city has Wikipedia page, which is Wiki Kharkiv. And it discovers that it's city of Ukraine and its location of Kharkiv National University and so on. That's What is doable when you you can define when you define object property, you define value just for one property and inverse properties will be inferred anyway. Is it clear what I have done up to now? Uh, yes, it's clear. Uh, in case of adding classes to Wikipedia, you were naming it like um, Wiki and afterwards the city name, right? What? Uh, 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 when you are adding cities to uh, Wikipedia pages, like can you please okay. go to the individuals by class? Yeah. Here the name is coming up like uh, Wiki and Berlin. So uh, you typed it like uh, first you placed Wiki and afterwards the city name. Yeah, yeah. I must type it. But then when after I type it, it recognizes. So it puts uh, right URI to this entity. But in the project, it will, it will look without prefix. So therefore, I must add this prefix explicitly. So let's add uh, University of Uvascula. So let's say that I add individual to this Wikipedia page. I put here wiki by hands. University of Vascular. So this is as it, it must be in, uh, I believe, in the real Wikipedia. Of course, it's good to check, but... And then uh, when I click OK, you see here prefix wiki removed. But you see that it shows actually that it's a Wikipedia or page University of Uvascula. So it just correct URI of it. But what I want within my project, just because I have University of Uvascula, I will show you also as an educational institution. You see University of Uvascula with the same name within the project, but with different URI. So URI is correct, uh, there are different URIs, but not to confuse you when you are, will be uh, using these uh, names connect with different objects. It's good to have this prefix visible. So therefore I just decide, okay, in Wikipedia, what we can do, I just can add wiki to everything which is there. Like by, uh, how to say, like, by rule, and that I just created a label. A label is something which will be used just in this project. It still will be the same URI. I put here label like wiki. University of yes. So you see that here now, we have Wiki University of Uvascula, which is different, of course, from educational institution, which is just University of Uvascula. Because it's good to use that kind of real URIs of objects as they are. 
And this uh, Wikipedia page of University of Uvascular here, you see, it's still, you see, Wikipedia or page University of Uvascular, it's still correct. But within your project, it will be with prefix. So now when I am connecting this, uh, I would like to connect this Wikipedia page of University of Uvascular with University of Uvascular. So I just make object property assertion and say that is Wikipedia page of, and here just university. You see, so I connect Wikipedia page with DBpedia page, oh, with DBpedia entity. Is it understood? And let's check our DBpedia entity. The same University of Uvascular as educational institute, this is DBpedia entity of it. It doesn't yet know without reasoner that it has Wikipedia page, but I believe that if we run reasoner, it discovers that this DBpedia identifier, like University of Uvascular as an object, has Wikipedia page which is that Wiki University of Uvesk. So it infers it anyway. What else still unclear, please? Because it's important. The rest is just piece of cake, almost. Not 100%, but almost. Uh, pardon, uh, how you were uh, like making this element explicit? Uh, this portion is like kind of confusing to me. Yes, yes. Uh, when you were adding uh, University of Uvascula in Education Institute and uh, in Wikipedia at the same time, so uh, there was an error, but uh, how this error was resolved? Why it's not coming up again? Uh... You mean which error? Uh, when you added Berlin in Wikipedia, there was an error, right? Uh, the, there was an inference. Or... I, I believe that it was a, a wrong definition of uh, that uh, domain and range of the property. Oh, so okay. now, now I make it uh, correct and it's, uh, it works. OK, OK. Then uh, what else is uh, here important? Uh, the next, what is important for you, let's say, uh, the remaining uh, complex thing that uh, we will try to do, at least start doing today, is uh, so assume that you are describing some person and uh, you want to describe different kind of like history of different jobs that person has. Uh, so you cannot just say, okay, this person is employed by, let's say, Nokia, because it may be true at certain time interval five years ago. And then after some time, it was uh, also... Uh, I don't know, employee of some another company. Then in some period of time, uh, it's employee of third company. So if you simultaneously add connection between yourself and three different companies, it will be confusion because it's not true that you are simultaneously uh, employee of three companies because uh, certain information about I mean, certain properties and their values are valid for a particular period of time. So th therefore, we must uh, invent here some trick so that you can describe, because actually you are describing your history, like your CV at some sense. So you must describe your study record, at least, and your job record. So therefore, we need that kind of virtual entity that's... Uh, most important thing, what we 
try to add here this uh, new type of resource or new class of resources called record. I just, uh, you can name it differently, but I just use record because it's clear. Record is an abstraction. So it's some kind of uh, abstract entity that we will put certain properties to it. So I will do it and then you will ask if something is unclear. So first I create that kind of class record. And then what I want uh, to create certain properties, uh, which will be data properties that are specifying beginning and end of uh, certain record, like validity of that record. I create data property, which is like is valid from and it's functional property most probably particular record has just one beginning and the domain of it is record and range of it let's check if we have here daytime date time this one So this is, is valid from and another property for the end of time interval. Is valid to. Of course, it's not nicely sound, but anyway, doesn't matter here. So it's also a functional property, which is applied to record and which has same kind of range, which is date time. So have you understood what I did? I just uh, create some kind of class for abstract objects. And these abstract objects, uh, at least uh, at that level of record, has just beginning and end. What else I want to do? I will do and uh, you just try to follow. So I just want to create two subcategories of record. So this is exactly as you will do in your assignment, very similar way. So I create subclass of record which is job record and another subclass which is study record. So why it's good to have two subclasses here? Because when you will speak about study record, because uh, as probably I told you already about that class subclass properties, it's like uh, every subclass inherits all properties from record. So when uh, you, we are talking about study record, it will also by default will have this beginning and end of time interval. But the study record may have its own properties. For example, connection to, in our case, it's good, to educational institution. So we can just create certain property. Uh, 
what I want, I want to now uh, have property which will connect study record to educational institution. For example, has institution. So I'm talking about study record. So domain is study record. And range is educational institution. So it's, uh, as I told you, it's always good immediately create opposite property which connects an educational institution with study record. So has institution is institution of is institution of, so it applies domain to institution. And range is study record. And we know that this is institution of in inverse of has institutions. Let's check me of this one. So now, now we create certain property, extra property, which defines our record. So now you can attribute this abstraction like particular record of yourself, like what is your CV? It's just set of records. And uh, let's say of two basic categories, study records and job record. Of course, you may have uh, your marriage record if you change five wives, for example, during your life, then uh, you will have a separate uh, record uh, from which time to which time and who was your wife. So that's uh, also possible. So you can have several categories of records, but all of them, the major, how to say, idea of the record is uh, that particular properties within record will be valid only during particular interval that is properties here because of that you can just separately define every your study record for example particular school uh, you study from that time to that time and what else in study record good to say because we have such class which is degree it's uh, what was your intended degree i may put it like that this property has intended degree okay so i'm talking now again about study record only and the range will be from educational degree So it's again what you may say about you and we can create immediately other way around property as usual trick is then that be of the main here now other way around it's uh, our degree and range is study record. That's already uh, great what we have. Uh, so we have connected connection to institution, uh, to intended degree and to type. So let's check uh, if uh, something else will be needed here. We can just 
take any one of us who we have as a persons here. For example, Mikhail. And let's uh, assert uh, him object property. So before we assert property, so if I want to say that uh, at certain period of time, uh, Michael Schumacher studied in Humboldt University of Berlin. So therefore, what I need immediately do before, because it's not immediately property of Michael Schumacher, I first must create that record. You see, I must to click here, study record, and create new instance of record. Just, I create it as abstract name, for example, something like that, just any name. Because I'm not using any prefix here, it will be just defined as abstraction in my ontology. So my university record. And now I can describe this record. I can create, for example, that data property assertion. So is valid from. So it's our. Where is time? Uh, it's, uh, I just don't remember format, but no. So if you someone can Google fast, uh, so this date time, what is uh, right way to type it so that I will not switch my screen. It's like uh, the year first, and then the month, and uh, uh -huh. then and the separator should be dash, not slash, I guess. What? Uh, you are using slash after uh, each entity, like after year, you have to put a small dash, not slash. Mm -hmm. Like high yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry. Not like this. Is it correct? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, and yeah. now times somehow. I think you need that the, the hours too. Uh, hours, okay. minutes, and seconds with uh, double dots between. So hours, for example, can it be like this? Then double dot like this. Oh, it doesn't allow me. Uh, let me check how it looks like. I cannot easily Google any example, though, so that T maybe T. 
that's a difference from previous version of um, protege that support this date more easily. Maybe I put here T word. Yeah, now it works. So T word is a time. So now we defined uh, this meaning. Okay. And it is valid to example like that. Okay. So we created uh, intervals. Then uh, also I want to uh, assert to this uh, record university. Institution. And here, and here, uh, Humboldt University of Berlin. Okay. And also intended degree. And why not know? So now we see that we created study record of um, just uh, as a separate entity with such properties. There is some record which is study record, which has beginning time and end time, like validity interval. And uh, this record is connected to Humboldt University of Berlin and intended degree was PhD. We just need to assert it to Michael Schumacher. So I just add here. Do we have this, by the way? We don't have object properties for that. Let me add here object property. Yes. By the way, I will show you this uh, different type of object property. So first object property has record. It's record. And this property will be domain, let's put it uh, person. And range is record. And then uh, is record of. Is record of. The main record and range person. And now we can do it uh, by this way. So if I want to create two separate properties for study record and for job record, I can just click to intended property and create sub property of it. You see, it will be sub property of his record, and I can name it his study record. Has study record. And study record, it will be domain, let's say any person. Where is our person? And range will be smaller. It will be mm, not here. Study record. And then I can create similar thing for is record of sub property. And name it is study record of.
And again, now I'm talking about domain, which is study record. And this is study record of some person uh, here. And also it's inverse of has study record. Uh, has of this one. So you see, now you understand the, uh, how to say, the logic behind this uh, uh, sub-properties. So when uh, you have sub-property, always have more narrow domain and range. And uh, it's sometimes easier for re reasoner to have this kind of things. Okay, now uh, when we have these properties, I can return back to this uh, way we, we're defining our record. And I can add here that this record is study record of. So that's what uh, we did. It's just uh, one example how you create a separate record for every piece of your history. So for study history and uh, especially for basic degrees, like you can uh, specify or add here secondary degree also. You can add uh, here uh, interval, how you get bachelor, then interval for degree uh, you may have a couple of master degrees from different places, so it depends how long you have history. So you can create several study records as separate entities of class study record and then connect yourself to each of these records. So that's a great thing because uh, later when you use, for example, or you would like to use SparkQL, you can always specify the period within which you are asking uh, what was uh, kind of degree was intended by Michael Schumacher during this particular time or anything of that thing. So just before we uh, stop, uh, is that last thing what I did more or less clear? Can you create another record of the same person with another time interval, maybe another university, another degree, is it clear or not very much? Uh, yes, it's, it's clear. We can. Okay. I will save it. So, uh, and just tell that next time when we uh, meet, it's last time of our, that kind of active lectures, and you will then uh, can continue with your assignment. I will publish this ontology, which we immediately have uh, here also in Moodle. And if I will edit it, uh, I will also put edited version. And uh, next Monday we start with two things, which are also important. I will show you how to populate your, it's that kind of name, ontology, some of your classes, taking data from DBpedia. For example, if you want to populate the class city, you can add here all cities which are reg registered in DBpedia or class country. And uh, all connections even between city and country. So this kind of example I will give you so that you can, if you want and uh, it's good actually for many different it's like a huge skill if you are capable of doing it and of course i will show you how to import for example you can create another anthology which is uh, populated with this dbpedia stuff and then i show you how to import other anthology to your existing one so i think these two things will complement everything we need the rest you can find in uh, the slides all the details examples and everything Okay, is it clear? Yes, it is. Uh, so if so, question. then 
Yeah, so I wish you all the best and we stop record now.